So we're going to break this video up into a couple components. Uh, uh, a secondary video will go over uh, going inside the machine and just kind of going over what's in, in the machine. So a little history on the La Marzocco Linea Classic. It's been in production for over 30 years. Uh, one of the favorite things that everyone loved about it was the introduction of a dual boiler system and uh, obviously one boiler for steaming the other boiler is for your brewing so in your with the brewing we were able to actually set a temperature and of course that can be changed uh, to your liking and that was one of the greatest advancements of uh, espresso equipment uh, at the time uh, fast forward to now, uh, they've even done more to it uh, by introducing a PID controller in it. So the temperatures are just that much more accurate. And uh, one of the features of the machine that makes it last so long is practically everything inside is stainless steel. The, the frame is stainless steel. Uh, you see the exterior is all stainless steel. Both the boilers are stainless steel. So you can get extreme longevity out of the machine. Um, you know, descaling the boilers, etc. And of course, with it being in production so long, parts are very readily available. So just going over a little bit on used, um, especially the used linea. So the linea, the look has stayed the same throughout all the years. So it's hard to delineate without looking inside of a machine or actually knowing the year it was produced and, and you knowing uh, any uh, advancements that have been done to the machine at that time. So one of the biggest advancements, um, obviously safety features, um, you know, put, uh, putting uh, safety devices on the boilers to prevent from overheating. Uh, the other th main uh, advance or upgrade to the machine was the saturated groups actually uh, becoming all stainless steel and being welded onto the brew boiler itself. Before the saturated group was made out of brass and it was bolted on to the brew boiler with a flange gasket and they are notorious for leaking, uh, especially through time. Uh, they also had, uh, I, I forget the years, but they had a production line where the, the, the studs that were welded onto the boilers were not staying adhered. And of course, once they crack, they start leaking. So this is the new style boiler with the welded uh, saturated group to the boiler. So here's your boiler. Here's the saturated group and you can see this is clearly welded there the old style you would actually have the saturated group would have a flange to it and you would have all of these studs with nuts on them uh, clamping it down to the boiler and you would also see a gasket uh, protruding out the edges of of that of that so if you're looking for a used machine that's one of the things you want to look at is make sure you're buying one that has the welded uh, brew groups or saturated groups to the boy the brew boiler itself is there is there a way that you can upgrade that if you buy the old model you, yes you can you can buy a new boiler for it but now you're going to be spending quite yeah, a bit of money you're going to spend okay. at least two grand just in parts if okay. not more depending on how many groups the machine is okay um, and to you it may be worth it because the cost of a new two group machine I, uh, automatic volume dosing machine this particular one is a semi-automatic but a two group automatic volume dosing is fourteen thousand nine hundred dollars so you know if you do have an older one you want to upgrade it may be worth upgrading um, as anything that is old, there's other th issues that can go along with that. So we do have an article regarding buying used equipment, um, and we'll put a link below for you on that. So I would encourage you to go to the Espresso Service Network and look up that article for purchasing used equipment. 
The other great advancement that they did is they went away from the mechanical style uh, thermostat for the brew boiler. They went to a PID controller and a digital thermostat or digital probe. So now the accuracy of the actual brewing has increased dramatically. So this particular machine came to us uh, via through a customer. We had been maintaining this machine all along. Uh, the customer got, um, the, the stand got bought out by a current client of ours. And of course we upgraded all their equipment to something that they have in all of their stands. Some of the things that we are just doing to it is obviously making sure all the valves are rebuilt, all the seals are replaced in it. Uh, the boilers are already clean due to the fact that they had it on a proper filtration system. And the other thing, because the machine is over 10 years old, we did take out the mechanical thermostat and upgraded it to the new PID controller. So the PID controller will always be on the left hand, lower left hand side of the machine. So obviously this one we Oops. retrofitted, but even in a new machine, you should be able to see it there. So buying new uh, on, on the La Merzocco, some of the things that you want to consider is some people don't like the fact of how these knobs operate, uh, especially when you have so many manufacturers and even La Merzocco has some machines that now have levers or they only have a quarter turn knob on some of the machines. The Linea Classic is not that way. So it's usually at least a half turn and of course this can be turned multiple, almost two turns, just to full open. So another thing on old La Merzocos is they typically did not have uh, the small flow restrictors in them. If it was a volumetric dosing, the only flow restrictor was in the flow meter, which is typically uh, at best a one millimeter uh, or a 1.2 millimeter which the flow rates are just too large and um, not good for proper brewing. So uh, one thing that they're adding on the new machines and what you can add on your older machine is these flow restrictors. These particular ones are 0.6 millimeter. They also come in a 0.7 millimeter or 0.8 millimeter. So what's the point of the flow meter? I mean the restrictor? The flow restrictor is to slow down the flow rate going to the brew. Okay. Because in a La Merzocco, there is no infusion chamber. So you're hitting it, you're hitting your coffee with a full force of water, which if there's any imperfections in the tamp or or air pockets or, or fissures, the water goes through there first and your shot's already ruined. Some of the other things that people are looking for is individual group temperatures and you cannot do that on the Linea Classic. So if you're looking for the feature of individual group temperatures, uh, the Linea, Linea Classic is not the machine you're looking for because it's one temperature for all the groups. Uh, if you want to upgrade to the Linea PB and do individual group boilers, you're going to spend quite a bit more for the machine. If you want to stay in the price range of the Linea Classic, some other manufacturers to consider would be the Slayer um, EP uh, or the uh, San Remo F18. Those machines will all have individual brew group settings and also other advanced features that you can do in uh, profiling your coffee. We'll put links below for those machines so you can look at those too.